Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at just a few of what we believe to be the very, very finest games that have come to the Nintendo Switch in just the past week. Yes, we're that blooming up to date. I mean, Nintendo's not doing any curation, so we thought we'd do it ourselves. We've got four lovely games to show off to you today that we have hand-picked. And there's a little bonus thing at the extra, a little, little secret something for you if you hang around until the end, so make sure you do that. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Let's start things off right with Time Spinner, a Metroidvania game that, in my view, leans much more heavily on the Metroid rather than the Vania. Not only that, but it introduces some RPG elements in there as well, meaning that you're going to be doing lots of interesting little bits and bobs and incrementally growing over time, and you're never going to be standing still, which is appropriate because you can stop time. Yes, you have the ability to stop time merely at the push of a button. Naturally, you can't do this indefinitely, or the game would be a little bit too easy. Instead, you can use it to solve puzzles, avoid enemies, and you're pretty much going to require it during boss battles, because without it, they are uh, a little, little bit cruel. Just a little bit cruel. I must admit, when I first saw this game, I thought, okay, that looks generally relatively interesting, but I wasn't exactly foaming at the mouth. But then when I finally got my hands on it, oh lordy, it's good. The time mechanic is really interesting, and when I actually remembered to use it in combat, because it took me, it took me a while to think to to actually use the thing. I got absolutely sucked in and just sunk hours into this game in one sitting when arguably I should have been working. I mean, it was kind of towards the end of the day. I'd sort of finished. It is just a beautifully refined game with a really interesting and really enjoyable gameplay loop, as well as a very interesting story. Uh, a lot of the time you are sort of required to go into the menus and have a look at little documents and things like that if you want to get the full picture. But I'll be honest, I didn't do that much and I was still really, really hooked. You can choose what weapons you want to use, as you can probably tell from the footage. I just like using the sword and the standard blue orb, and that's fine, you know? You don't have to change things up if you don't want to. You're going to be exploring an awful lot. This is much more open-ended game than something like, I suppose, Metroid Fusion, where it's a little bit more linear in that sense and sort of guiding you places. You have to work out where you want to go a lot of the time, and it's so rewarding as a result. It's a stonking good game, and it's it's absolutely massive. If you like Metroidvanias, you've got to check this one out. Going from the massive in scope to the very simple and sort of little in scope, we are looking at Pachang, and yes, that's the name of the game. This is essentially an action puzzle game where you are tasked with getting balls in containers. It's about as simple as it gets. Having said that, it's very simple to start with, and then later, as you get further and further into the game, it gets phenomenally complicated. Not even, you know, sort of the concepts are very simple, as you can probably see from here, but you have to sort of split your brain and try and focus on way too many things at once, and it rapidly evolves from a complete cakewalk into a complete nightmare, but a very rewarding one. It's so cathartic to get the ball bearings where they need to go, and to do so with style, and you'll start to get into a rhythm, and then you'll slightly break that rhythm, and it takes so, so long to get back into it. It's not an enormous game, but it is extremely sweet, and a lot more tough than it may look on the outset. Every level's kind of like a manual Rube Gold. Goldberg machine, and even though it did get stressful from time to time, it's so worth it when you finally get through a level that's really eating away at you. I don't know, there's just something oddly endearing about the whole experience. I really like it, and I hope you do too. If not, well, that's also fine. <laughs> Don't think for a moment that because it has a simple aesthetic, Slay the Spire is a simple game. Oh my lordy Lou! <laughs> this is essentially a turn-based, card-focused RPG, turn-based strategy, combat RPG kind of game sort of thing. And it's a roguelike. The basic task is to just battle your way through as many rooms as possible and get as far as you can, like many roguelikes before it. However, the variety of what can happen in this game and the variety of different cards at your disposal, like, I, I swear I did not see a repeated card once. 
except for when I have multiple in my hand. Some of the cards are relatively simple on the surface, and then you get some cards that are colossally complicated and really potent and really useful if you use them correctly, but you're gonna have to use a lot of lateral and tactical and forward thinking in order to make the most of them. And naturally, as it's a roguelike, it is infinitely replayable as well. I believe all the paths are randomly generated, but please don't quote me on that. And I've just tried to look it up online and didn't, 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 didn't get any further. But you're absolutely going to have to have your thinking cap on for this one. If you're not tactically minded, this probably isn't going to be for you. But if you are, this is something really, really special. I honestly feel like I have barely even begun to scratch or even marginally mark the surface of this game. It is so enormously deep, so rich in content, and I really can't do it justice. You really have to have a go with it firsthand. At just $25, I'd honestly say that of the games on this list, this is easily the biggest bang for your buck. Definitely not the cheapest game on the eShop by a long chalk, but you're going to be able to play this forever, or at least until you die. And lastly, a first-person action platformer game, Refunct. Yep, I wasn't lying, this is a first-person 3D platformer, and that sounds like a recipe for complete disaster but somehow they've managed to make it work. It's an extremely simple game. There's no death, that you're basically just running around walking on platforms and sort of these, these sort of land masses that rise out of the earth. Uh, see, even, that's a very different thing. Pressing buttons and then repeating again. It's not a long game. In fact, I'm pretty sure you could probably complete the whole thing in 10 minutes. However, it is extremely engrossing and it ju there's just something weird about it. I don't know whether it's the ethereal soundtrack combined with the smooth movement and smooth gameplay, but there's just something calming and gentle about the whole experience. I'm actually quite a big fan of the, uh, the whole sort of, you know, games as an experience type thing, and this one fits the bill. I don't imagine it's going to be everyone's cup of tea, but even so, it looks stunning, it runs brilliantly on Switch, and you know what? It's only $3. When I first got it, I loaded it up and I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll fiddle around with it for, you know, sort of two minutes or so just to get an idea of what the game's about before I actually dive into it proper. And you know what? I sat down for a good, I don't know, half an hour, I think my first playthrough was, and just completed the whole thing. It just completely sucked me in when I should have been working. I mean, I suppose I kind of was. And when it came to recording the footage for this, I, I did it again. I, I just played the whole thing again, and it was wonderful. And I think I enjoyed it almost just as much as before. I think a really key thing that makes this work is the fact that the jump and the slide buttons are on the R and L buttons respectively, meaning you can use your left and right stick all the time and never have to take your thumbs off them, meaning the movement is buttery smooth. I would actually really like to see this kind of gameplay incorporated into a big, expansive, you know, sort of really highly developed game. I don't know whether it actually will or whether the developer has any intention to do that, but holy lordy, this is the first first-person 3D platformer that I think has ever actually been good. So those are the four games that we think are the best on the Switch from the past week. So if you choose just one of them, you're gonna have a damn good time. But I did promise you something extra, didn't I? Okay, we're gonna include another Switch game that didn't come out in the past week, but we still think is a little bit of an unsung hero. Basically one that we would have included if it had come out this week. <laughs> West of Loathing! Way! I've talked about this game in the past, but oh goodness gracious me is it good. The art style is, uh, well obviously it's intentionally massively, massively simple, but it is such a good and enjoyable game. The humour, oh it's absolutely on point. The combat is genuinely really enjoyable, and just everything seems to work really, really well. Like far better than I think it has any right to. It's pretty damn big as well, and realistically even though the combat is fun, it's pretty much all about the dialogue. It's all about the humor and the interactions that you have with other people and, you know, just the interactions that other characters have with each other. It's by no means going to leave a lasting philosophical impression on you, but if you just want entertainment, this is really hard to beat. There's a great big chunk of replayability as well, because depending on the choices you make in the game, the game will take a different turn, which is why it's replayable. Oh. I've actually only played it through the once, and I really should go back to it, and I keep telling myself 
if I will, but I've got too many other damn games to play. If you find my kind of sense of humor quite entertaining, then you're gonna have a damn good time with this one, trust me. Unless my maths knowledge has betrayed me, that brings the total to five lovely games that you should definitely check out on Switch, or at least one of them. Just, just have a dive in, have a dive in, have a look. You never know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you loathe not clicking on that subscribe button <laughs> and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>